So now what I'd like to do is start talking about the structure and functionality of the strategy pattern from the point of view of what's in the Gang of Four book in terms of the intent and the applicability and so on. So the intent of the strategy pattern is to define, to define a family of algorithms, encapsulate each algorithm, and then make these algorithms interchangeable to let clients and algorithms vary independently. And this is just canonical definition of the intent from the strategy pattern right up in the Gang of Four book, which you can read about at the Wikipedia link at the bottom of the page. When should you apply the strategy pattern? Well, you should apply it when an object should be configurable with one of many algorithms. In our case, we're going to be having code that's going to need to be able to traverse our expression tree in different ways. And all the algorithms can be encapsulated. That is, we can bundle them up into classes and objects that have interfaces defined on them, APIs. And we can have one interface or one API cover all the encapsulations. So as you can see here, the interface we're going to have is the C++ STL iterator interface. And then we're going to use that to embody all the different traversal strategies that you need to go through the expression tree in different ways. Here's the structure diagram. And this structure diagram is very, very interesting. Uh, at first glance, your reaction, if you're like most people, is, gee, I think I've seen that before. It looks an awful lot like the bridge pattern. And indeed, it does. And I'll talk about that in a second. But first, let's talk about the structure and participants of strategy in terms of itself before we compare and contrast it with anything else. So as you can see, there are the three main roles here. There's a strategy role, which is defining the interface for the different implementations, the concrete strategies, if you will. And in our case, that's the C++ STL iterator interface. Then we have a bunch of concrete strategies, which are going to somehow refine or inherit or customize the generic interface. And in our world, that's going to be pre-order ET iter impl, post-order ET iter impl, in order, uh, in order iterator, and so on and so forth. So all the different ways of iterating through things. And then there's finally something else called the context. And in our context, in our context in the expression tree, the context is unused. But you can use the context in other contexts for situations where you need to be able to add additional information that's not provided through the common API that the strategy and concrete strategy have embodied. So strategy and concrete strategies have a common API, of course. And if you can't quite shoehorn everything to fit within that common API, the context can be used to give you additional information. And it could also be used just as kind of a scratch space blackboard to store other state that may be relevant to multiple strategies, but don't belong in just one of them. Now, as I promised, I wanted to compare and contrast the structure diagrams and the participants of strategy versus bridge. And at first glance, they look really, really similar. In fact, if you're a bit of um, a skeptic, you'll, you'll notice that many of the Gang of Four patterns have a very similar structure. They almost always have something on the upper left-hand side that then references over to something on the right-hand side, which typically uses inheritance. And sometimes people go, well, aren't there really just, you know, kind of two patterns in the Gang of Four book and everything else is just a variant of that with different names? And the answer is, yep, there's some truth to that. Uh, but the deal is that it actually made sense to talk about each of the patterns in separately or in isolation because they do have different properties, different intents, different applicabilities, different consequences, and so on. So we're not going to talk about the philosophics, the philosophy underlying this distinction between strategy and bridge from a meta point of view. We're just going to talk about how they differ and how they compare with respect to how they're used in in C++ or, or object-oriented programs. So the first thing to note is that strategy is a so-called object behavioral uh, pattern, which means it's focusing on sort of dynamic runtime issues, whereas bridge is classified as an object structural pattern, which means it's more related to how things fit together. Now, the line between sort of fitting together statically or structurally versus doing something dynamically at runtime that's kind of a blurred line. So that distinction by itself doesn't shed a whole lot of light onto things. But let me break it down a little bit more uh, completely to see how things differ. 
first and foremost, the context in strategy plays a very different role from the abstraction in bridge, even though visually they both appear on the left-hand side of the diagram and they both are rectangles and they both have these funny uh, arrows leading out from them, pointing to something else that's basically a, a base class or the root of a hierarchy. The difference is clients use the abstraction directly when they access the contents of something that's implemented using the bridge pattern. So a client makes a method call on the abstraction API, and that method call is then forwarded to the appropriate instance in the inheritance hierarchy. Moreover, you can refine the abstraction using inheritance, as you see from the diagram here. In contrast with strategy, clients do not access the strategy hierarchy through the context. In fact, it's often not even there. But if it is there, it's not accessed directly. It's just used by the concrete strategies to get access to information that may not fit nicely into any one of their implementations. And that's one reason why it's often not even used, because oftentimes the concrete strategies are perfectly fine to work by themselves to do their job. They don't need a context. If you do need a context, there's one there, but it's not always used. In fact, it's rarely used. So clients actually access the contents and the behaviors of the strategy through the strategy API, whereas clients access the contents of a bridge realization through the abstraction. So that's probably the most obvious difference here. And uh, it also turns out that bridge and strategy get combined a lot to make bridge strategy, which is a pattern compound that has an abstraction, and then you can replace the implementer hierarchy using different kinds of strategies. And you may even do that dynamically. So those are just some of the ways to differentiate strategy and bridge.